My name is Uchi. I always like to say Uchi as in Gucci because it's easy to remember. And I'm really excited to be here today to uh, talk to you about utility in the metaverse. And a little bit about me, I live in Toronto, but I'm originally from uh, Nigeria. I'm also a big foodie, so I'm taking recommendations for restaurants in Vancouver, if you have anyone before, while I'm here. And before now, I worked at uh, Shopify, Royal Bank of Canada, and IBM. And I'm also the founder and CEO of Chimoney. So I've been in the blockchain space for a few years now, since 2016. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how we can enhance utility in the metaverse using open technology. And I'm, I'm gonna walk you through a use case that we did in five different blockchains. So, I mean, as most of you know, in today's Web3 world, there are many, many tokens out there. But the truth is that most of them are not really useful. Right, you can use them to buy real products and services. And this creates a problem for not just uh, people in the Web3 space, but everyone, right? So it reduces financial inclusion. And also uh, for us to, to solve this problem, we basically need to make tokens spendable in the real world. In this talk, I'm gonna explore the concept of utility and I'll look at it in relation to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I, most of you already know what Maslow's hierarchy of need is. But we're gonna bring Maslow's hierarchy of need and try to like see how we can measure utility using Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So I'll discuss opportunities for improving utility by connecting traditional financial systems uh, using open source technology with the work that's already been done in the Web3 space. And then I'll end by discussing a use case of what we did with five different blockchains, so Celo, uh, Polygon, Solana, and some of them. We're gonna talk about it at the end. But before we begin uh, and dive into what utility in the metaverse means, let's discuss the Maslow's hierarchy of needs briefly. I know most of you are already, already familiar, but Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a motivational theory in psychology, and it explains how human needs are arranged in hierarchy from the most basic needs, that's the ability to have food to eat, to the complex needs like the ability for self-actualization. We're gonna talk about all of those in a bit. So in the bottom of, bottom of the hierarchy, we look at physiological needs like food, clothing, shelter, and things like that. And then it's followed by safety needs, social needs, and then esteem need, and finally self-actualization needs. So using this, Maslow's hierarchy of need, I've come up with something I'm calling uh, the Uchi's hierarchy of metaverse utility. So I use this when I'm evaluating uh, crypto projects. So I advise a couple of uh, crypto projects and I, when I first speak to the team, I try to understand how that project meets one of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So, I mean, as you might know, utility refers to the usefulness or value of, of something, right? So when we, when we take a look at what utility means in relation to uh, the different Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we're gonna see that for physiological needs, both tokens and NFTs, they have the potential to uh, help us meet those needs. And they only do that if they enable us to purchase basic necessities of life. So like, for example, food, clothing, shelter, and a token, for example, would be used to purchase goods and services online, while an NFT can represent ownership of a physical house or ownership of a car. So when a token helps us meet this need, the ability to purchase products and services that meet our basic need, then we can say that that token is useful or it has utility. But more than that, when we move up, we move up to the safety needs, both tokens and NFTs also have the potential to help us meet uh, our safety needs. Right, so for example, we have stable coins that are pegged to the US dollars, and this provides a sense of safety or stability because uh, the US dollar is kind of recognized by most countries, and when a token is pegged to that currency, basically makes sense to uh, provide stability. And then finally, for NFTs, right, NFTs can represent ownership of something very, very valuable. So for example, an artwork or a collectible, uh, which can then securely be stored on the blockchain. When tokens and NFTs provide this value, we can say that they are meeting the safety needs in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
So that we can say that those tokens are, uh, uh, are useful. But I think what's more important is what's on the top side of, of, the, of the master's hierarchy of needs. It's pretty obvious that a token should be spendable in reproduction services. But what's less obvi obvious is how can a token help us achieve our self-actualization need, right? So, I mean, tokens and NFTs can help us pursue things that we're passionate about. So our passions and aspiration, for example, they do that when they give us access to exclusive experiences, right? So if we've made lots of money, we can basically buy an NFT that potentially provides access to an exclusive event, an exclusive ex experience like backstage access to a concert or meet and greet with an artist that we're really, really uh, passionate about. But more importantly, tokens can help us to solve bigger problems in life and also NFTs. So if there's a cause that we're really passionate about, we can potentially uh, use tokens and NFTs to donate to those causes and that would make an impact in the world. That, that brings satisfaction, that brings fulfillment and uh, tokens and NFTs that basically help us do that have utility. And so, I mean, when we understand and look at utility in the metaverse in, in this lens, it's basically easier to, to measure how, uh, how useful they are. And, and you can start to unlock discussions around how do we build, uh, how do we bring utility using open technology? So I'm gonna jump into that in a bit. So, but the challenge is that the current state of, of uh, Web3 or, or the blockchain ecosystem, it's really, it's interesting, that's kind of how I describe it, right? Because there are so many tokens out there. In fact, there are over 220,000 uh, unique tokens, but the challenge is that they are not spendable on real world products and services or experiences. And most of them are for speculation, right? So it's estimated that about 90% of, of transactions in the Bitcoin network are for speculation purposes and this limits uh, the utility of these assets and basically it reduces financial inclusion because when people that are interested in getting into this space see that there's this speculation going on, they don't wanna like jump in and regulators are also kind of wary about basically supporting uh, the ecosystem. So we're gonna jump right into what we did, like something practical that we built at Chimoney. And uh, we built this product called uh, Unispend. It's, it has some open components to it and it's all available on GitHub if you wanna check it out. But at Chimoney, we believe that when we're able to connect traditional financial system to the work that's being done in Web3, we have the potential to basically unlock more utility for the metaverse. And that's why we built Unispend. So Unispend is a crypto to commerce protocol. Currently, Unispend supports uh, over 500 million products and services from Amazon and Shopify, gift cards and things like that. But we're not gonna focus on all that. We're gonna focus on like the open components that we, uh, that we built to make it happen. So basically, Unispend, it's a way to bridge between metaverses, tokens, NFTs, and things like that to real uh, what products and services. And uh, we've been able to build this in such a way that there are open APIs, open SDKs, and also low code tools that any developer can integrate with uh, uh, today. So without jumping deeply into this, at the moment you can off ramp or cash out from five different blockchains to one of these products. So over 500 million products from Amazon, uh, gift cards, over 2,000 different gift cards, and even offline payment systems in uh, Africa. So for example, mobile money in uh, Kenya. And we're looking at also adding things like uh, WeChat Pay, whereby someone that has a token on uh, one ecosystem can basically cash out to their WeChat Pay wallet. So ultimately, for us to bring utility to the metaverse, we basically need to uh, build in the open, right? We need to build, and it has to be collaborative, it has to be inclusive. But before we kind of conclude, I will stop for a bit to see if there are questions specifically around uh, maybe 
how we build Chinese spend or whatever you're thinking. So if you have questions or comments, I'll stop uh, to take them now. Okay, so, yeah, so, uh, I mean, the future of utility in the metaverse is, is open, right? And what we did with Unit Spend was we used a couple of things to make it happen. So, as most of you know, the different chains out there have open ways to send transactions to them, right? So, what we did, we started with the SRP Ledger ecosystem, and we used two things in that ecosystem. We used the transaction SDKs, and also we use something called the path finding. So it's basically a way to route transactions across multiple, multiple tokens uh, in the SRP ledger ecosystem and allow users to pay a certain token while you get like a stable coin. So that way you are kind of protected from, uh, from the speculation that goes on in the ecosystem. So we use the SDKs to basically initiate the transaction when a user has signed a transaction, we're able to then confirm it, and a product is delivered to that user based on the payment that they've made. Again, this is open source on, on the Chimones GitHub repo, if you like to check it out. And once we've done that, and we were able to process a few transactions, we then scaled onto the Celo blockchain. So on the Celo blockchain, Unispend is also available there. And after that, we scaled on to EVM chains. I mean, as most of you are familiar, EVM chains are the standard for, for EVM chains are basically the same, right? So once you're able to support one EVM chain, it's easier for you to like scale across multiple EVM chains and let users buy products and services, sign transactions, you confirm the transactions and basically deliver a product to them. But what we're looking to do is getting more developers to contribute to the Unispend ecosystem. And there are a couple of ways to do it. So the first way is doing a full API integration. So to do that, it's more, there are some open elements for it, but it's not, it's, it's kind of not fully non-custodial, but you kind of have to work with uh, uh, Chimoy to do that. But the interesting one I think uh, this audience might be interested in is the low code approach, where it's fully non-custodial and it's peer-to-peer -peer between uh, the user that is signing a transaction and uh, the service provider. So you add a single line of code in an iframe on a, on a web app, or if it's in a mobile app, you can add it to a web view, just a single line of code. It gives users the access to the Unispend marketplace, which they can browse across multiple products. And when they add an item to cart, they check out, they are basically signing a transaction uh, from their wallets in a non-custodial way, so there's no need for them to create an account or things like that. Once that transaction is confirmed, that product is delivered to them. So the wallet developer doesn't have to like build any relationship with a chain money to offer that. It just works between like the user signing the transaction and then the merchants and also chain money that is delivering the pro that product to them. I think that's where we want to go, and I mean for utility to be enhanced in the metaverse, right? It's something I've been thinking about is, in the Web3 space specifically, there is this idea that uh, we're disrupting the existing status quo. Whereas the fact is, most of the tools that are being used are things that have been worked on for years by like open source developers out there. And I think more collaboration will do the space more good than harm, right? Uh, whereby, yeah, so we're not disrupting basically the existing standards that have been out there, but collaborating and speaking in a way, in a humble way that acknowledges the work that I've been doing, I think that, that could really uh, go a long way. And I'm happy that I think the discussion is moving from disrupting the existing status quo to like collaborating. I mean, previously, like in 2017 or so, it was just like the Web2 world wasn't the right way to do things. But now I, I believe the discussion is shifting between like that to like collaborating between like the different existing technology with like this new stuff that is being built that actually depends on those, uh, those existing technologies. So 
I'm going to stop there for a bit for maybe questions or comments or thoughts. I'd like to hear like what you think or if you have questions. Yeah, go ahead. So if you think that most of the money in cryptocurrencies is uh, speculative, uh, why would people uh, want to use the money? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. So if the money is speculative, why would people want to use the money? Okay, that's a good one. So, I mean, when I think about speculation, I think about it from the angle of a lot of users or a lot of developers create new tokens with the aim of doing pump and dumps. They try to like get those tokens to rise in value and then sometimes they cash out and leave. And some of those tokens and NFTs don't provide real value for, for users, right? If I have that token, I'm not able to like use it to pay my bills, pay mortgage and things like that. There are a couple of reasons for that. There are technical reasons and also there are regulatory and business reasons for, for, for all of that also. And I think most of the challenge is on the regulatory front. Uh, but yeah, so I think what would help is when a token is being developed, building it with the mindset that, okay, yeah, people can speculate on this token, but in, in addition to that, this token should add additional value. So using that, uh, the Maslow's hierarchy of need that I described before, so where does this token fit in, in like this, uh, in this uh, hierarchy of needs? So does that token make it possible to, uh, for people to buy food? Or does that token make it possible for the holders to maybe make a donation to a cause that they are passionate about and add value to the world? I think those are the things that we should consider when uh, creating new tokens. Uh, does, that, does, that, does that answer your question? Yep, thank you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, please. Um, I, it's very interesting how the pyramid works mm -hmm. and all these things regarding the web 3.0 and all these topics. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question, and uh, because right now we are living this transition from the web 2.0 to the web 3.0 plus metaverse, which yeah. is really a new thing, which is already not established and standardized in the outside the world and software engineering. So my question is that according to this pyramid, for migrating to Web 3.0 plus metaverse, we should start by creating tokens and NFTs, and I assume that also cryptocurrency. Mm. So would you say that should be a good starting point or there is anything to be considered more important to be able to start bringing the Web 3.0 to the outside world? Yeah, that's a good one. So, yeah, so, yeah, there's, this, there's a transition from Web 2 to Web 3, like you mentioned. And also, uh, yes, you mentioned that uh, would a good start be creating tokens and NFTs, or is there something else that needs to be done? So, yes, there's definitely a good start. So, creating tokens and NFTs. And I think while we're doing that, uh, something we should also consider is, uh, I guess two things. The first one is, what value does this token or NFT add to uh, users? Is this token useful? Uh, can this token be used to pay bills? Can it be used to make donations? Can it be used to protect one's asset? Can it be used to... Uh, hold value in something that someone is passionate about. So the utility of a token should be, a, should be considered. And also something that should, that should be considered is uh, the environmental impact of the token on NFT should be, should be considered also, right? So what blockchain are we building it on and how does that kind of uh, impact the, the environment? I'm not really gonna go into details of that, but I think that's a factor that uh, should also uh, be considered. And, and something else that I think it's super important is carrying everyone along, right? So the challenge that I've seen is that people that are building, some people that are building in the Web3 space kind of have this 
so pick, not, I don't know what to use, but basically they feel that sometimes the work that's been done is not the right way to do it. Like there's this idea that decentralized and uh, open, yeah, decentralized is the way to go, whereas that, there's always there's always been decentralization, right? With the way, if you look at the way open source is managed, like GitHub and things like that, issue tracking, pull request process, all of those things. We already had all of those decentralization. And I feel like sometimes uh, the Web3 space is trying to reinvent, reinvent what already exists. And looking down on those that have already been doing this, and lay the, those are laid the foundation for uh, what's been done in Web3. So I think uh, the idea of collaboration should also be important, should also be considered greatly when trying to transition or augment what has been done in Web2 web to like this new Web3 stuff and also the metaverse stuff. That's kind of my, my opinion. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so uh, that's everything I had uh, for, for my talk today. I think I rushed through it. But if you have any questions, definitely like send me an email or follow me on Twitter. Happy to connect with uh, folks, especially if you're looking to uh, build stuff on any of the blockchains. I've worked, on, I've worked uh, with several uh, blockchains, so I'll be happy to support in that regard. And yeah, so happy to collaborate because like I mentioned before, it's only by collaborating that we can unlock utility in the metaverse.